about an hour ago, I got tagged in a pretty funny thread on Twitter that I wanted to share with you guys related to hiring software engineers. Basically, this Twitter user, Shay, got a cold DM from somebody with the following message. Yo, nice to meet you. If you want a job at blank, complete this take-home assignment, and if you complete it well, we will interview you. Now, we all know take-home assignments are a vital part of the software engineering interview process. We see them all the time, and a lot of the times, companies don't actually use them in good faith. Like I mentioned in my video yesterday about the woman on LinkedIn who was criticizing a candidate for complaining about being exploited for free labor, there are cases where companies will do things like this in bad faith. The take-home assignment was essentially to build an AI agent that fetches all the follower data points mentioned in a Google Sheet for an Instagram and YouTube creator slash influencers. So for example, just the basic data for follower, subscriber count, location, content, average views on the last 15 reels, et cetera, et cetera. All of these requirements were a bit too specific to be random. It sort of feels like this is an actual thing they are looking for someone to do. They also then go on to say, you should probs think about web scraping as I doubt there are official APIs for these. It's good to know that somebody giving a take-home interview for candidates probs thinks that there's not going to be APIs for these type of things. It really shows that they understand their own requirements quite well and they did a lot of homework when creating this quote take-home assignment. They then say send them a demo recording once they are done. You have 48 hours max I won't reply to questions. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm sending cold outreach messages to people, I also always make sure that I end with you are not allowed to send questions. And I specifically do this because I understand the person I reached out to might have a lot of those questions. Like, who are you and why are you sending me random job requirements? Clearly, they're looking for a rock star developer who will not question anything they are give them. And if they have any questions, they'll just figure it out. Anyways, our protagonist then goes on to share exactly who it is that sent him this message. And it's actually from a a company called Cracked Devs, who I'm sure could have probably came up with a better name than this. But anyways, they talk about building AI agents that actually work. And if you'll scroll down, you'll get to the meet the team section. And I found this particularly funny because if you look at the tweet, there's clearly another person here in the screenshot. But if you go to the site after this tweet blew up, that person is now gone on that list. And all we have here is Michael Beer, who says they were founding at Helio with a $175 million exit. And I decided to do a little looking into what he's got going on. So it says he's a software developer at Meta full time for the past two years. He has an open to work thing on his LinkedIn. And also here he mentioned he's a first employee at Helio. And just bear with me here. There are a lot of really weird things going on. Like, first of all, why would he put that he is the first employee at Helio under his meta experience? And where is the experience for Helio specifically over here? Second of all, is he like trying to leave his job with the open to work border? Or I don't know, maybe he's just standing in solidarity with people that are looking for jobs. And third of all, if he's been at meta for the past two and a half years, according to a very basic LinkedIn search, it looks like MoonPay acquired Helio for 175 million around January, 2025. So this year, which is a confusing timeline because he mentioned he was at Meta from February 2023 till now. Also, he mentioned he was the first employee at Helio, but on the website, it mentioned founding at Helio. And I guess you could be like a founding engineer, which technically is still the first employee. But the way it's phrased here is just so misleading that it almost seems like it's intentional. Usually when you look at someone's LinkedIn, you end up with a lot more of an idea of who they are and what they do. But I feel like I just left this one a lot more confused and with way more questions than I feel like I should ever have for a situation this insignificant. And also another weird nitpick is Helio launched in 2022, and that's around the same time you would expect the first employee to be there. But it looks like from 2023, he was at Meta, so maybe he was the first employee there, then he ended up moving to Meta afterwards. But now he still uses working there, but quitting before they sold as like a badge of accountability and authority on his own website. Anyways, this is all to say that I'm not surprised at all that a company like this is doing shady stuff like DMing people 48 hour deadline coding applications that have very suspiciously specific requirements and the person sending them has no real idea how to go about solving them. Okay, quick update. I was editing this video when I found something else that was pretty interesting. So on crackdevs.com, this is the profile picture that he has and it matches the one on LinkedIn. However, if you go to the Helio website and you click on the Michael Beard there, I don't know if 
this is the same dude or not, but, but this dude actually has the founding member at Helio on his profile. And furthermore, there's no mention of meta anywhere, even though the university and the education is the same on these two profiles. So now I don't even know if this is the real dude or not, because on the website, when you click connect, it takes you to his Twitter. And from his Twitter, when you go to his profile, there's nothing on LinkedIn. So I don't know which one's the real one, or if this is just some weird scam or some dual LinkedIn profile play. Anyways, back to the original video. All this is just going to make what you're about to see feel even more confusing. They have their own Twitter and I checked it out and it's sort of funny. The Twitter banner is how it feels working with crackdevs.com and then just a stock photo of an AI utopia. And I know for a fact this stock photo isn't just like some new photo they created. This has been circulating around the internet for quite some time. I feel like I used it for one of my images from like a stock website. And I just found it hilarious that they couldn't use AI to create a like at least unique banner image for their own Twitter or at least something that's a bit more high resolution than like the screenshot they took of this one. Anyways, around 20 and 16 minutes ago, and I think this one got deleted because whenever I try to go into it, it shows it doesn't exist, but this one does. So they must have like corrected it or something. Around 20 minutes ago, they addressed the situation by saying, we saw the post. That DM was poorly written, distasteful, and not how we want to show up. We own that. Now I'm extremely curious to know exactly which part of the DM they found to be distasteful. Was it the fact that they cold outreach to this person without any prior knowledge of who they are? Was it the fact that they give them a super specific requirement set, but they didn't even do the most basic research on their own problem, like knowing whether or not Instagram or YouTube has an API that you could get these types of stats for, which you would assume somebody that created a coding assessment would pretty easily be able to tell you? Or was it the fact that they ended the email by saying, you have 24 hours max, I won't reply to questions? Personally, I think the biggest offender is they use too many sentences per paragraph. It's pretty common knowledge that if you're hiring somebody, you want the job description to be in perfect LinkedIn speak, you know, something like one sentence per per paragraph. That way it spans a larger amount of time to make it look like you're saying more than you actually are. They go on to say for clarity, it was part of an experimental outreach strategy for a screen recorded task for a take home assignment as the message states and not unpaid code, not something we would ever need to reuse. And again, this just rubs me the wrong way. Why would you be giving someone a take home assessment that is so specific without knowing the basics of it yourself? Like whether or not these social media platforms actually have an API where you can get those stats from. It shows that you never tried to solve this problem yourself. So even if someone did complete the assessment, how are you going to assess their solution when you don't even know what you're doing? Then they say this message was only intended for those who we were already talking to, but due to a miscommunication, it was sent to people with no context. And like, I don't know, can you blame me if I don't quite believe that? Like, would you end a conversation with someone you're quote already in talks with by saying, I won't reply to questions? Like if you were already talking to them, you would have been having a conversation that was back and forth. It just seems a bit odd to give them the assignment and say, I won't answer any questions. The message seems to me like something you would send to a thousand different people. And you would add that at the end because it would be too much work to actually answer anyone that did have a question. They finished off by saying, but how it came across matters more than our intent. We're learning fast, improving our processes immediately. We're lucky to work with some amazing devs who helped us build and grow, and they deserve a better representation too. Thanks for all those who called it out. Now, as we saw before, they posted one post, took it down, and four minutes later reposted another one. And it looks like the only diff between them is they took out the part where they said this message was also intended for those who were, we were already talking to. But due to miscommunication, it was sent to people with no context. I mean, the only reason you would take that out is if it was so easily disprovable or against common sense like we just talked about, which again, just shows how scummy this feels. It feels like one of those things where you you rely on the other person giving you the benefit of the doubt over and over again until you can literally not disprove the allegations against you. So you remove that one little part that can't be disproven anymore. This whole thing just reeks of virtue signaling and scummy practice. Also, not that it really matters. They pivoted sometime in September from being what looks like a job posting platform to what they do now, which looks like a dev house for building AI agents for different companies. And that would explain how they got so many followers on Twitter posting baity things like who is looking for a job we are hiring, etc. Anyways, I'll leave it off with this funny comment I found on their apology thread. Crazy how articulate someone becomes once they start backpedaling. I don't necessarily think this is a bad apology by any means, but it's definitely a far cry from the message that they were cold outreaching to people. And again, the fact that they reposted it while deleting this part of their apology message is just, yeah, it's just this leaves a horrible taste in my mouth. Anyways, if you're ever in the wild and you find any posts like this, please make sure you tag me on Twitter. I would love to take a look at it. And if you guys want to discuss this, I have a Discord link below to my Discord where we talk about cool stuff like this. Anyways, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.